Welcome to Small Cap Nation. I'm Jane King at the New York Stock Exchange. With me today, John McCammett, the editor of BioInvest, a biotechnology newsletter. And uh, it's a great newsletter for anybody who hasn't read it. So interesting. Let's just start with the general biotechnology industry. You've been studying this for 25 years. How do you see things right now? Well, we're in big correction mode here. Basically, was it the Hillary tweet or some of the other yes. problems last uh, late summer, early fall, six months into our correction after a three year major bull market in the biotechs. Whether or not we feel there's good values now, we're still in a choppy market. It's another three to six months probably to transition out of all of the downdraft. Longer term though, we just have done a big analysis on the last big downturn in the sector. We did a 200 week moving average. Mm -hmm. Feel we found some support there technically. But in 08, 09, you had an industry with a lot less cash, a lot less products. Uh, and we just made tremendous progress fundamentally, particularly when you look at things like regulatory, new drugs on the market, the HCV cures have all come since that time frame. So the industry's in much better shape than it was previously, but we still are very volatile. So this downturn is not as severe as what we saw back in 2008, 2009. Well, I, it's, it, severity is a good word, but so I think maybe price-wise you feel that. But when we're looking at underlying fundamentals and we got companies selling below cash, things that they didn't probably have that much with, but so we're much more well capitalized. There's more companies with products. We're looking at over $200 billion in big pharma and big bio, literally is loose change for mergers and acquisitions. That's a larger amount of money that can make a big difference in the space. So. Okay, now I know this will be a huge topic, but try to narrow it as much as possible. What are some of the most promising things you're seeing out there in biotech? Well, the most promising is something that people have gotten pretty excited about, and you've seen on television, Catruda and Optivo. These are two new cancer drugs that are called immune oncology agents. So historically, whether it was a, a chemotherapy or a monoclonal antibody, we were attacking and killing cancer cells. These new drugs actually go to a different part of your body, and it's your immune system that the cancer cells learn to turn off, per se. So we're able to turn back on the immune system, which can then itself go into surveillance mode and help kill these cancer cells. And we're getting in refractory patients and also some better survival rates. So these are very important advantages. We're having a whole new methodology, basically, using your own immune system to tackle cancer that we really didn't understand 10 and 20 years ago. Interesting. Okay, so let's talk about the Zika virus. Um, obviously in the news, talked about a lot. Um, first of all, what kind of threat is this? Well, it's an emerging threat. We do not know exactly if it's tied to the serious disease with the small brains and the babies, but we see a huge increase in those numbers. Epstein-Barr is, virus is a very dangerous paralyzation, neural disease that it's getting in adults. It's spread extremely fast, came over during the World Cup in 2014. So this is particularly without any real knowledge of it. We're really in dire straits right now as far as we do not have a vaccine in development yet. It'll be until the end of the year till we get that. Therapeutics are always a little sketchy in this area because it's hard to treat these viruses after they've already happen so you want a vaccine or preferably in this case what we call as a vector is the mosquito. The mosquito is spreading this disease. So there's already a company out there that's working on this. It's called Intrexon XON and they have a subsidiary based out of Oxford, England that genetically engineers the mosquitoes to mate, a, a male mosquito to mate with a female and then they basically that generation dies. Okay, so the uh, they successfully mate but then they die at some point in the growth cycle? In the, the growth the cycle, so it's mosquito? called a pupa, a pupa, okay. P-U-P-P-A, yes, uh -huh. exactly. So this is a, an infant mosquito, or the female thinks she's done her job, but she never actually has it, uh, bears adult mosquitoes to move forward. And how does this company reach the male mosquitoes? Well, basically, they, what they do is they release genetically engineered male mosquitoes okay. into the environment and they okay. compete directly. They already have programs up and running in Brazil and they've showed up to 82% knockdown of the mosquitoes, which would provide significant control, particularly compared to 50% control, which is the best you can get with powerful insecticides. Ticker XON? XON. Okay. Traded here at the New York Stock Exchange? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, what are some other vaccines, other promising technologies? The vaccines are literally not very there yet. We do recommend a vaccine company that may have a play in this. It's NVAX, Novavax. They've already gotten money from the government or BARDA for avian flu. They also are one of the first to develop an Ebola vaccine. So they're 
basically use genetically engineering and they can create new vaccines relatively fast. But Jane, even when they do that, you still got to do some animal testing before you go into humans. I mean, this is just not a process that you can steamroll per se, but you definitely want to be throwing money at it. Uh, uh, this week we talked about $1.8 billion from Congress potentially coming into this, maybe some of the unused Ebola funds. Now, we have heard SARS in the past 10, 15 years, bird flu. I mean, how does this compare? I think maybe there's a little bit of fatigue of, oh, this is another fear-mongering virus out there. What's the reality of how scared should we be of Zika? We probably should be scared till we know what's going on here. So for example, also they have started to monitor blood transfusions in the United States. The other thing is that there's a very short window where they can show where you're incubated with the disease. So we have 80 to 90 percent people walking around that don't know they have it. In addition, we don't know if it's person to person. Right now it's a mosquito, but if we're going person to person, whether it's sexual activity, that's a big deal there's also. There's some evidence of that is, that's, that's happening. Too. Absolutely. And this rise in this, um, the birth defects is a big deal. Um, this is, for me, it feels bigger than Ebola. There's less answers. It's right here in the Americas, it's spreading rapidly, and with the Olympics coming up in Brazil, there's almost no way this just doesn't say front and center, particularly as we're just unraveling what's going on with this virus. Okay, thank you very much, John, for sharing your research with us. It's My pleasure, very Jane. interesting. And thank you very much for joining us on Small Cap Nation.